Hello friends and family, my name is Daniel Burrell and welcome to Diary of a Manic. Today I want to talk about uh, what can happen, uh, what can happen, diagnosed mental illnesses and the dangers of it and like, why you should go get help or encourage people to get help. So I was talking last week about um, Hollywood vilifying mental illness and all that business and I decided hey I should look at the prevalence of mental issues among inmates and this is from the state from the state Canada because most of my viewers are from the states and I thought that this would pertain to you a little more but uh, with Depressive disorder, it's 21% of inmates. Manic depression, bipolar disorder, or mania, 12%. Schizophrenia, or another psychotic disorder, 5%. PTSD, 7%. Another anxiety disorder, 7%. Disorder, 6%. Um, so, <laughs> the numbers are even more stark when you look at how many or what percentage have mental illness as opposed to the individual mental illness. 55% uh, of male inmates have a mental illness and 70, and 70 female, uh, female inmates have a mental illness. So <laughs> these numbers are just crazy. And they're, it's just ever expanding because these people don't have proper access to mental health care or health care in, in most cases in the United States. So who's affected by men? By men? This is Canadian statistics, sorry. 20% <laughs> uh, of Canadians will experience a mental illness in their lifetime. This doesn't mean that it'll be a recurring or chronic mental illness. Depression is only chronic if it's more than six months or recurring. So 20% of Canadians will personally experience a mental illness in their lifetime. Approximately eight, approximately eight will experience major depression at some point in their lives. This is normal. That's usually because someone dies or something, something along those lines. Uh, suicide accounts for 24% of all deaths among 15 to 24 year olds and 16% 16 16 to 44 year olds. This is crazy. I don't, I don't like reading these numbers. Uh, how does this impact youth? It is estimated that 10 to 20 percent of Canadian youth are affected by a mental illness or disorder. This is um, this really strikes home for me because I lived with depression for six years, uh, about three of those, about three of those, and, and I never told anyone. And it really affected my schoolwork. I would say, like, I didn't do very, like, I did okay in school, but I could have done a lot better, and I just didn't really feel like I had anyone to talk to, and I think that's a big problem with today's youth, but I think that's awesome, it's awesome that today's youth can go, today's youth can go to a counselor online for free, I think that's great. Uh, the total number of 12 to 19 year olds in Canada at risk for developing depression is a staggering 3.2 million. Once depression is recognized, is recognized, help can make a difference for 80% of people who are affected, allowing them to get back to their regular activities. This, 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 is, kind of, this is kind of a weird statistic because 80% of people are helped but the 20 it's it makes it sound like they aren't helped but you can get help don't let that number discourage you you know a lot of people that have never lived with depression and they started getting depressive episodes when they were in their 40s 50s i've known people who had depression 
recur after 10 years of nothing. <laughs> um, like, I've had a lot of people <clears throat> say that they, that they don't want medication because it makes them feel weird. This is the biggest, <laughs> the biggest letdown for me. Because if you take an antidepressant or an anti-anxiety or a mood stabilizer or an antipsychotic drug and it makes you feel weird, then try a different one because they all have effects on every different person. So you might try one and try one and really weird, and then you try the next one and it'll make you feel great. That's one of the big issues with these medications is they're not a hundred percent and they're not they don't work the same way for everyone I've actually been on about six separate um, pairs of medication for depression and anxiety because I've had because I've had me worse I've had meds that worked for a year and then they stopped working I've had meds that just made me feel emotionless and that was kind of scary. I wasn't sure if I wanted to go back to medications after that but I'm really glad I did. So, uh, sit, schizophrenia, is, schizophrenia is the greatest disabler as it strikes most often in the 16 to 30 age group affecting an estimated one person in 100. Uh, this but schizophrenia is really weird because it can be treated and some people might have completely normal lives and, and others will never be able to work again, but at least it's managed. Uh, in Canada, this is in Canada, not in the States, only one out of five children who need mental health services receive them. Uh, so I lived with depression for six years before I, before I seeked help. I did not want to seek help. <laughs> I, I really, it's really tough to talk about someone, talk to that, talk about that to someone for the first time, but it's really important to do it. It'll change your life for the better. It'll make everything a lot easier. And please don't be a subject of my video because because you didn't want to get your mental health in check. So, uh, <laughs> sorry for ranting. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy it, subscribe below if you want to see another one of my videos. And click or tap right there. <laughs> it's backwards for me. <laughs> Click or tap right there, right there. Last but not least, thanks for watching, guys.